Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your December 2019 tarot card reading. Thank you so much for being here. Also, happy, happy birthday to all of you too. I know that I'm a bit late getting these videos out. However, here we are, we're doing them. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, the energy that represents you, Sagittarius, the card that came out representing you specifically is the King of Wands, which we love, right? When a Sagittarian takes on a fire energy, such as the King of Wands, there's really an unstoppability to it. It's really you tapping into the truest essence of who you really are, innovative, creative, intelligent, wise, um, and you have this disruptive quality about you, which I often see with the King of Wands. He kind of comes into a situation, comes into an environment, and can rearrange this, 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 and this, and boom, all of a sudden the whole new kind of cycle begins. And I, and I feel like there is a cleaning house energy with the King of Wands, but also it's like cleaning it out, new beginning, same thing as Scorpio season, which was kind of the essence of the whole month last month. And we're kind of finishing out that close out new beginning cycle. And I think I told you guys last month that, okay, maybe it was going to be a few months of this kind of same kind of energy. And yeah, because we have such huge astrological events happening in January and late December, Jupiter, your ruling planet, is now in Capricorn. And I think this Capricorn theme, because Jupiter is especially relevant to you as your ruling planet, is really pushing the Capricorn themes in your life. Now, Capricorn is an energy that is and the, why am I saying all of this? Because in your environment, right, I pulled this card, a uh, major arcana card to signify the essence of your environment, which came out as the devil, which is Capricorn, right? I mean, it's highly Saturnian and it has this nature of very hard work and ambition and no nonsense. The devil is a no nonsense energy and he actually came out twice for you. So it's, he's not scary. He's not bad. He's just a reminder that the temptation to revert back into past patterns is going to be very, very strong. And you have to consciously fight these urges to go back to the things that were comfortable, comfortable relationships that were unhealthy, comfortable patterns that are unhealthy, habits, you know, any, anything that you have in your life that is not healthy. And I, I suspect that the devil is going to be that little little maybe a big kind of yabbering voice in the back of your head that's constantly like no you can do better you can be better um and i don't mean better in terms of like you're not good where you are now but changing a karmic cycle is really really challenging as much as we might all like to think that we can just sit and meditate and you know breathe and do these kinds of things and then all of a sudden our whole new karmic cycle is different our actions is really what you know, it's like a difference between what we say and what we do. You can say whatever you want, but if you do the same thing, then you're setting forth a new cycle. So this has a lot to do with the actions, right? The physicality. Capricorn is earth sign for you. Capricorn is in the second house, which is house of the body. Earth signs, physicality, right? That just is what it is. So when you put something into form you are telling the universe what it is you really want. So you have to be very careful about what you do at this time, okay? And to be very conscious, to be very aware and very careful about each step that you take. Now, the King of Wands is here to say like, yes, please give me that devil energy, give me that ambition, give me the drive, give me the wherewithal to accomplish something that I know I was here on earth to accomplish, okay? So this is kind of, you know, for those of you who are into the whole spiritual world of ancestry, this is breaking ancestral karmic lineage as well. So it's kind of a no joke kind of energy, that devil, right? Now, when we come out with the traditional nine cards, when we get into the nine card block, the very first card that came out is the 10 of wands reversed, which tells me that this king of wands, while he's willing to work hard, he's only going to be willing to work hard for the big vision. And anything else that kind of comes in, that tries to disrupt, that tries to distract him from his goal is kind of a no-go. And the King of Wands is not about to assume the responsibility for anybody else. He's not about to assume uh, the role of 
like, let me take care of that for you. No. So if you're dealing with a Sagittarius and they're kind of like, you go take care of, like, just take care of your own stuff. Because your Sagittarius is, 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 it might be very disorienting because Sagittarius is such a service-oriented sign. They're so known for being there for friends and family, like, all the time. But now is a time when they really, really, really need to decide what's important and what isn't. And sometimes taking care of your stuff or helping you will not be at the top of that list. And that's just the way it is. And we all go through, through things like that. So understanding your Sagittarian's journey is going to be more beneficial to the relationship. So you have to just let them do what they need to do. They are in the process of cleaning house and have been in the process of cleaning house. Anyone one who is buzzing around like a mosquito and being very like a nuisance is not going to really make the top of the list, right? So if you want to stay in your Sagittarius life, it's probably best for you to not really need anything from them right now. They, they might help you um, if you really need something, but they also may pull away after they help you take care of it, right? Uh, they are on some mission of some kind that many of us maybe don't necessarily understand. And, you know, Sagittarius, if you don't really know what your mission is, that's okay. It's not saying you have to have everything so defined and so black and white. But I know that a lot of you are mulling around in your mind like there has to be like something else there has to be another way and for some of you that's continued soul searching and learning about yourself and others of you that's learning how to apply that in the world and some of you that's in your career and that's with your family so it's going to be different for everybody and many of you who might not know exactly what you're doing that will become more clear as we move into 2020. Now, Sagittarius, the temptation, right, the devil temptation is going to be really strong because I think there are going to be a lot of opportunities that come in that you're going to have to say no to, right? We have the Ace of Coins reverse. We have the Ace of Wands reverse. You're just simply going to have to say no to things, and you're simply just going to have to let them pass you by. And that can be really, really hard because it's not to say that there's not promise in these things. You know, it's not to say that there's not growth potential. It's not to say that your money couldn't do well in these invest investments. It's not to say that that trip couldn't be awesome for you. It's not to say that that relationship couldn't be good. But in terms of the greater good, you do have to ask, see the devil, right? Saturn, he's all about time. And when he comes out twice, it's telling me that your story and what you're dealing with, your immediate present situation is just that. It's just your immediate present situation and that it is a stepping stone in a much, much, much longer story. So these little things here, while beneficial and while helpful and while cool that they may come in, at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, like, is this satisfying the long-term goal or is this just satisfying an immediate need for for like a short term financial gain or a short term satisfying your sexual desire or like whatever it is? Is it just simply satisfying a short term thing? And I think because when I put the camera down, you'll see how this King of Wands is actually looking away from the entire reading, which tells me there's a lot of things that this King of Wands is looking away from. He is turning his back on a lot of things that have potential. And whether it's conscious or not, it's still happening. And I think it's good. Like as much as we love these things and they are, they are exciting to get in your life, they just simply might not be the right stepping stone for you. And I think your gut knows that. I think your, your intuition is going to be undeniable. And you're not going to be sitting here asking yourself all these questions like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. What am I supposed to do? How am I best to handle this? Da, 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 da. It's not going to be that kind of dialogue. And I don't think that Sagittarius is wasting any time mulling things around in their life or in, in their mind. They're not trying to logic their way into or out of anything. They're just simply going. And I think when a fire sign does that, that's such a fire sign thing, right? You just go. You just do it, right? The fire is associated with the spirit, you know? Earth is the earth and fire is the spirit water is the emotion and air is the mind so when your spirit is leading 
and your spirit is leading and who's to question it and why, right? Now, the next card we get, which comes out underneath the Ten of Wands, it's going to be really important for you to really dis discuss with yourself, I guess this could be a discussion, but to really talk to yourself about... Um, thing that was really coming to my mind it just kind of left um, that there was a fantastical element to things in the past some kind of idealism some kind of idealistic quality which I think a lot of us are um, feeling because of the Neptune in Pisces which has been there for a really long time and is going to continue to be in Pisces for a really long time there is this aspect of the ideal, the end-all, be-all, the best of the best. And I think some of you are starting to let go of expectations in that regard and, and not expecting anything to look like the way you think it's going to look. Uh, because when you start doing that, you realize through past experiences that that has been a struggle. So now as you let go of the fantasy, is kind of what I'm seeing with this particular alignment, letting go of the fantasy, but hanging on to doing it because you want to do it, you know, falling in love with the journey more than the outcome. I think there's someone around you. I'm getting an element of like an elder actually with this card too, because this card comes out right next to the devil, which is in the very center of the reading, the second devil card. Um, I feel like there is an elder, there is a father figure, there is a teacher, a mentor, something like that, that has prominence here. And I, I have this feeling that they might be giving you some dose of reality. Um, they may be giving you some harshness of truth and yet it's probably one of the best pieces of advice that anyone has ever given you and that in and of itself is going to shake you up so much to even like rededicate yourself even more to your vision and the kind of life that you you are starting to see for yourself now the thing that i think uh which is which is which is interesting is that i feel like sagittarius is starting to consider things that they never would have considered before um, like if you are dealing with a Sagittarius who's a little bit non-committal, now they are kind of like, you know, maybe it's time for me to really settle down and maybe it's time for me to think about having a family or having kids, right? Doing something of the more traditional uh, way and maybe there is some goodness in the traditional way of doing things. Um, which is maybe offbeat for your Sagittarius. Okay, so that's something that could be going on. Um, a Sagittarius who has worked for themselves for a very long time might consider going and getting a job, you know, and it might even just be disorienting of like, I've never considered doing that before. It was never an option for me before. And now all of a sudden, it's like one of my priorities, like how weird. And it could be because of this, this pull of the devil to chill out and to settle down and to start working hard and to put your pedal to the metal, right? We're moving into a 2020, which is two plus two plus zero plus zero, right? As a four year on the collective, or as, as a collective, it's the world number. So we're moving into a four year and the number four is all about laying new foundations. It's all about brick by brick, one thing at a time. And, and you cannot escape that, you know, like we are all going through that at the same time. Um, I also feel like you have someone around you who is very supportive of your devil energy, someone who is very supportive of the choices that you're wanting to make, someone who is very supportive of, of you. And in a way, they're kind of on the sidelines here being a cheerleader, but they're very soft and very quiet. And they are here to really wrap their arms around you, maybe actually or maybe metaphorically, uh, to wrap their arms around you and to just really be there. I don't see a lot of judgment coming from the Queen of Cups at all. I don't see a lot of pushing. I don't see an agenda coming from the Queen of Cups. She's just here. And I think in a lot of ways she she really knows like that you just got to kind of do what you got to do. And she's not about to try to suppress your King of Wands-ness, you know. And I know that you don't necessarily uh, want to eject this person from your life, 
but you also are more like she's got to be along for your ride, he or she, whoever this person is, like they need to be more along your ride because I don't know that Sagittarius is really going to be on her ride. You know, her ride is sort of um, not a top priority right now. If you're in a relationship, this is just going to be a temporary kind of deal where you just got to let the Sagittarius run wild and just let that happen. Um, otherwise, there is a risk of maybe losing them. Um, if you are not in a relationship and you're connected with a Sagittarian, you know, same kind of deal. You just have to let it let it run its course. Um, they are feeling an internalized pressure. They are feeling a restriction. They're feeling that desire to grow something and to actually have some prominence in their life. And uh, they're trying to take their life up to the next level and they have to do it on their own and they know that they have to do it on their own. And they are, the reason why is because wh wherever in their life there was uh, turbulence, they're trying to get away from that. And they're working very hard to get away from turbulence and just really establishing peace. Because I think that whoever you were, Sagittarius, right, whoever you were, in the past, you know, five, six, seven years, you can feel the evolution taking place. Like it's so real. Like who you are becoming is becoming like your personality is changing, right? Your, um, the way you deal with people, the way you work with people, it's all evolving. This is what I call my card of spiritual evolution. It's very slow going and it is, you know, there is actual effort involved, but yet the rewards are massive. Now, what's kind of funny is all of the cards, so the Magician is the number one card in this particular deck, and then we got the two Aces, and these are the, um, the main reversals, also the Ten of Wands, but these were the reversals that we got, right? So it's interesting that right now is not necessarily about taking the things that come in right now. It's really about the long game, and I, I do. I think these are going to be very, very tempting for you, Sagittarius, and they could come in forms of a romantic idea or a financial investment or whatever. I highly suggest you don't jump into them right now, right? I highly, highly suggest you don't. If you're looking for a new job, I think that's kind of a different story. These are more quick fix kind of things. Um, like things to fulfill your loneliness or to make you feel validated in some kind of way. Now is a really good time to hang on to your money, okay? Hang on to your money, to be really smart with it. Um, one of my old clients who, you know, multi-multi-millionaire, one of the things that he always said was, if you pay attention to the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. And I, I think that this is a penny pincher more than he is really worried about the dollars because he, he abides by that philosophy. And while Jupiter, the planet of abundance, is in the second house, which does have a lot to do with money, it's in the sign of Capricorn, which is Saturnian rule. So your second house is all ruled by Saturn. And to have Jupiter and Saturn coming together in the sky, it can be the best thing that ever happened to you, or you could really, really struggle. And it can operate in the extremes there. So right now, I think it's best for you to spend a lot of, like if you're not really quite sure where you're going, if you're just really not quite sure where you're going, I recommend not making moves in the short term. Just wait until that vision becomes more clear uh, and don't pull any triggers right now. Just wait until you feel that settled knowing and, uh, and I think you'll be really glad you did. Now, I think the very last card that came out, don't freak out, <laughs> it is the Nine of Swords. I'm telling you not, not to freak out because this can be a very uncomfortable time for all of us and you especially, you know. Uh, this can be a very uncomfortable time where we are being pushed and challenged and kind of forced to confront ourselves as with Scorpio season. Libra and Scorpio season really was all about like look in the mirror. And once you're done looking in the mirror, it's about now you got to make the change. So, you know, when we move into Capricorn season late in December, we have this essence of now I get to use the wisdom and the knowledge that I have accrued the past 10, 11 years. So 
and that's hard, right? Because we have got to do something with it. We can't just sit there and be like, yeah, okay. Like we actually have to step into the new, the new wisdom. And it can be very stressful to like, it can be very, very stressful to have the conversations with ourselves, one, and two, um, to say no to the things that we really, really want to say yes to. Now, it can I'm not trying to tell you not to chase your bliss, you know, like I'm not trying to tell you to do the drudgery things and avoid feeling good because we do always want to be happy. But I also know that there is more happiness in following the long term ambition than there is in the short term satisfaction. Okay, and that's really what this this whole month is setting us up for is a long term projectile uh, or long-term trajectory rather so that we can then, you know, be more fulfilled, I guess, if, if that's what you want to say. So let's go ahead and put this camera down and we will take a look at the cards that will clarify these in the comprehensive so you can get an idea of really some more detail. All right, see you in a sec. Okay, Sagittarius. So here you can kind of see how the cards are laid out. Remember, this represents your environment, but it's also the very center of the nine card block. So it's very grounded. It's very stable. It has a lot of like, you can feel restricted, but it's not restricted in a bad way. You know what I mean? And like I said, the King of Wands is looking away from everything, which means he's just really got his eye on some long-term thing uh, and he has to remain focused and in a way he really does have to turn his back on certain things in order to like really make sure that this transition happens and it can be really hard because Sagittarius can be can have a little bit of FOMO right fear of missing out and and I think there can be a lot of question of like well what would happen if I did take this ace of coins or what would happen if I did take this ace of wands what happens if I did do something in the short term not that it would be detrimental but I, I think it would just prolong the phase, the devil phase, just that much longer. You know what I mean? So let's go ahead and use a psychic tarot, a firm foundation, uh, number four. What did I just say? It's so, like, it's so much of a devil energy thing. It's so much of a Capricorn energy thing of just, like, really making sure that you are on firm footing. And that's not usually, right? I always say Aries is my spark, Leo is my bonfire, and Air and Sagittarius is my, my wildfire. And it's not common for wildfire to stay in one place, right? <laughs> Obviously, if it was uh, common, then it would just be a bonfire and it would be really easy to put out. So your wildfire tendencies, you know, they're going to be restricted now and it can be uncomfortable, but it's for your best interest and it's only temporary, okay? It's very temporary. Breathe, yeah, chill, breathe, <sighs> breathe out, like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> Some people walk into devil phases because we all go through these phases, right? We go through these devil phases and we, we feel like, oh my God, life is not taking me where, where, where I want to go. This isn't happening the way I want it to happen. And we feel like life is against us, right? Or we feel like all this stuff is happening to us. And it might not, not even necessarily be happening for for us, like sometimes I say, but sometimes it's really just happening. And it's that process of like removing yourself from the situation at hand, removing yourself from the people and all of that. And just like saying, okay, it's not happening to me. It's not victimizing me. It's just happening. And when you have that faith in the higher intelligence, which Saturn, right? The devil is a higher intelligence. He is still a spiritual being and he provides the lessons that we need, you know? Okay, let's start clarifying these. So the Ten of Wands, these are gonna be the cards that we look at in the comprehensive reading, by the way, in case you're new to my channel. The link will be down below. We'll talk about these following cards for like another 20 to 25 minutes. So FYI on that. So the Ten of Wands reverse, we have the Two of Coins, Page of Coins, it's not about loading your plate with obligations right now, okay? It's really, really not. Uh, now is a time to 
just do the things that are aligned and truly important for you. That's it. Those are the only things that you should be doing. Ooh, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna take strength to turn these things away or to allow the delay to happen. This is not about short-term satisfaction. Not at all, yeah. Be careful of what people are trying to offer you. Um, again, I don't think it's about the, a new job. So if you're searching for a new job, that's not necessarily what it is, unless it's like a quick fix, you know, a quick income kind of deal. Definitely steer clear of all those kinds of things. Whoops, hold on. And, okay, these were the ones that came out upright. So I'll take these. Let me get the others. Boy. Man, those really fell all over the floor. Okay. Now let's look at the devil here in the center. The central devil card. Caution, consideration, skepticism. See, the devil does beget manifestation opportunities whether we see it that way or not the devil is a, a very um a very clear advocate when we allow him to be our advocate a lot of us fight against these things though because it it does it is very uncomfortable that I pull out for her. Okay, I did pull three. I'm going to pull one more for that Queen of Cups, actually, before I... Okay, yeah. Connected with these of coins there. See, I think the thing is... So there are going to be things like you're you're not going to feel comfortable in the suspended state and that's going to be the problem is the desire to act the desire to make something happen is going to be so strong and even if you were to make something happen or to make these aces come in or whatever there's going to be this voice of you is like don't do it don't do it relax pull it back like don't jump on it there's going to be that that kind of, like I said, it's like a yammering. Um, it's going to be loud. It's not like the quiet, still, small voice, you know, of the spirit or, or spirit talking to you or whatever. It's not like that. It's going to be loud and obvious, and that is the voice you should be listening to. So let me pull one more to clarify the King of Wands here. Oh, see? And then the Ace of Cups on the bottom here is the very last card. So this is where we're going to pick up for the comprehensive. Again, if you want to join, you are more than welcome. Wish you guys nothing but the best. And I'll see you in a couple weeks for Capricorn season. Thanks so much. Take care.